Okay. In order to create kind of a, a probability, it's not really probability. I should, I guess, I should say it's a um, a suitability map. I'm going to be making kind of some subjective distinctions where, using a ten point scale, I'm going to say ten is the most likely that we'll find yellow birch there, and zero is the least likely. Um, I don't really want to create a Boolean raster where it's just yes or no because it's the world isn't that simple. So in this case, I'm going to say where are the most ideal elevations for birch to grow, and I'm going to call that 10. And elevations in which birches will definitely grow, but it's less ideal, I'll call that 5, or half as likely. And then 0 for places where it doesn't, it won't, probably won't grow at all. Um, if we look at our kind of relevant literature, we'd come up with this 792 figure, which is really just a rounded version of 2600 and the fact that they only have two significant digits here makes me think okay they rounded it to the nearest hundred let's just call this 800 meters um, where above 800 meters will be our zero and then it says that it grows better at lower elevations than higher elevations um, because I'm not a uh, an ecologist I'm just gonna split that value in half and say let's go 0 to 400 is most likely and let's call that 10 and 400 to 800 is probable uh, but not as likely as um, lower and we'll call that 5. So we already have a classification. Um, 0 to 400 meters is 10 on our scale and 400 uh, or 401 to 800 would be 5 and everything above 800 will be 0. So how do we do that? I'm going to take this DEM in my raster calculator and create kind of an expression that, that that helps me describe that. So if I was to just say, for instance, okay, my DEM that's in meters, wherever it's less than um, 800 meters, right, that's going to return a value of 1 for all those places. I want that to be worth um, 5, right? So I'm going to say times 5 because it'll multiply that boolean value times 5. So all of the places under 800 are going to be 1 times 5 makes them 5. But I also want to include places that are not just below 800 meters but places that are below 400 meters. So in addition to that expression I'm going to add another expression that's almost identical where the DEM is less than 400, let's add another 5 points, which would make it 10, right? Because this is um, less than 800 includes values that are less than 400, but we're going to add another 5 to it to make them 10. Um, if, if that doesn't make sense, hopefully it will once we, once we get the, um, when, when we can actually see the ordinal raster we're creating. So my expression is valid. That looks like it's going to work. And I, I just want to reiterate one more time. The DEM that is less than 800, all those locations less than 800 meters are going to be multiplied. So the 1 of yes will be multiplied by 5. So we have a value of 5 for everything below 800 meters. But additionally, we're going to have places that are less than 400 meters get an extra 5 points. And they're going to become 10 where they're twice as more likely in our very primitive model to have um, yellow birch. So I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to go back to my desktop and put this under my scratch and call this um, elevation good. And say save and I'm going to run it and see what happens. Okay, you have sh you should have something that looks like this, and it looks like a boolean, but it's actually not. It's just showing the two values um, that it wants us to see. So I'm going to go into the properties and make sure that it's different. And I like color, so I'm going to go to pseudo color, and I'm probably going to use um, maybe I'll use this orange color ramp. Get the min and max, and say what are the min and max? It's going to take it a little while. I should have hit estimate, but I hit actual. I don't know why I did that. There we go. 0 and 10. Classify. And now I say apply. And there we go. 
See, that's pretty cool. It's showing us the zero is the very light um, kind of white color. Um, and that, those are places that are above 800 meters. And then the five value, which is not being shown very well there, is this kind of light orange. And those are the places that are between 400 meters and um, sorry, between 400 meters and 800 meters. And then everything that's below 800 me uh, 400 meters is given a 10. So that's based on that one line that we read, lower elevations are more likely. And if we wanted to, we could do something similar with the slope raster. Um, we had one hint in here, um, I think about, yeah, it likes well-drained sandy loams with within the soil orders, blah, 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 on flats and lower slopes. Um, I don't have any particular uh, particulars about what type of slope, so I'm actually going to not do slope. And I'm going to move on to aspect, um, because I think that one's a little more compelling. Northeast aspects rather than southwest. So I can, I can isolate northeast aspects and southwest aspects. So I'm going to go ahead and do my aspect raster and give that some scores. All right, I've cleaned up my layers panel a bit because uh, I just want to keep focused on what, what we're working on here. You can grab your identity tool and click around and you start to remember, oh yeah, okay, zero to, it goes around the horn all the way back to 360 and that kind of radial um, interval piece of data is really kind of this categorical thing that tells us what direction we're looking um, on the slope. Now. I'd like it to be so that everything from south, which is 180, to west, which is 270, it'd be great if that was all just zero. And everything else is, is reasonable. It's a, it's a suitable habitat, so we'll give that a five. But the best would be north and east, so zero to 90. I want to give zero to 90 kind of five more. So I think in order to not have to kind of create four separate statements about how much everything should be worth, I kind of want to just do two statements. I'm going to do one that says everything that's not southwest, give five, and then just add five more to the northeast. So I hope that's not too confusing, but if it is, watch it a few times, and we can kind of go through it together um, you know, at a later date. But I'll open up my raster calculator, and let's kind of give it a whirl. Don't be afraid to use parenthetical notation. We need to make sure our order of operations is the same. And every logical expression you do should be contained in um, its own parentheses. So I'll start. I'll say wherever the aspect is greater than 270, right? So that means all the places that are above 270, between 270 and 360, or wherever aspect I keep my parentheses going here, or wherever aspect is less than south 180. I want all of this definition, this kind of giant logical definition, I want that all to be categorized as 5. So I've said everything here that is not kind of between 180 and 270, everything else is going to be 5. Now take a look at that and try to understand what that's saying. And if you need help, we can talk about it later. But that's that's one part of the definition. So I've just categorized everything kind of that's not south and west. All of that's going to get a five. But I'm going to add five more onto just the northern part. So I'm going to say plus I want everywhere that has an aspect less than 90, which is east, I want all of that to be multiplied by 5. So I give it 5 extra points. So here we go. Everything between 0 and 90 is getting 5 points that are additional to what I had said before. So that means that 5 and 5 is going to give the north and east 10. Now, that looks kind of confusing. It might be over some people's heads, but it's okay. Study it, look at it, see if it makes sense to you. And when you're ready, um, save your new aspect file. Uh, 
I'm going to leave this here in elevation good. I'm going to call this aspect good. And say OK. All right. And when you get your output, it might not actually load it automatically. But if you drag in your aspect good, you might get this weird thing where it's nan and zero. And you're kind of like, who's nan? You know, I don't call my grandmother nan. I call her grandma. What's going on? Um, well, this I'm pretty sure is just saying that there there were a couple places in our data set where there was no data. So I think that might be the way it's describing non-applicable uh, pixels. It doesn't know what to do here. So our data is still there. We just have to visualize it. I'm going to go into my aspect good here, go to properties, play with my single band pseudo color, and it says min. Look, it's null. Well, our minimum isn't null. Our minimum is zero, and our maximum is 10. We know that. We, we defined it. So I'm going to just type it in, say what my min is and what my max is, and say classify. And when I hit OK, I should get, aha, there we go. And now this is good. We should be seeing not our crazy continuous aspect raster, but a classified ordinal aspect raster where north to east is uh, 10 because that's the best. Everything else is 5 and south to west is 0. So now we've got, hopefully, we should have um, two ordinal data sets. One where we have elevation, let's zoom out a little bit here. We have elevation that's good, okay, and bad, and we have an aspect everywhere, which is going to look a little crazy, but we have good aspect and okay and bad. So I'm going to do one more video in which we make uh, we reclassify the land cover into good, okay, and bad, and then we'll average these out and get our kind of suitability map. Okay, see you then.